Building advanced AI agents with RAG is definitely not something that's limited to complex and custom coded applications. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to use my favorite workflow automation tool, N8N, along with my favorite library for AI development, Langchain, to build a full-blown RAG AI agent using my Google Drive as my knowledge base so that the agent can answer questions using the documents that I upload. And when I say no code, I mean that today we're literally going to write zero lines of code to build our AI agent. And don't get me wrong, I love to code my own agents, but I would be dumb to code them myself every single time when a lot of the times I can make them very simply without code using N8N. N8N is a workflow automation tool similar to make.com or Zapier, but it is way better because you can self-host it. So you don't have to pay hundreds and hundreds of dollars a month like I did at one point for Zapier, and you can scale it infinitely. So definitely more on that in a future video. But on top of that, which already makes N8N and amazing. It integrates directly with Langchain, so it is so, so easy to build AI agents that are really powerful with tool calling and RAG, just like what I'm about to show you now. So without further ado, let's get right into the meat of it and see how easy it is to build a RAG agent with no code. All right, so I have already fully built out these NAN workflows for my RAG AI agent, because I just want to walk through it with you very, very smoothly to give you a lot of value very quickly. You can also steal these workflows workflows from me if you want. I've got a link to a GitHub repository in the description of this video so you can download these workflows as JSON files and then you go into your own N8N instance. In the top right here you click on the three dots and then import from file and in seconds you can bring in this entire workflow into your own N8N instance so you can take this further and build something amazing with RAG. And so with that we can actually dive into what this workflow looks like. So just like with make.com and Zapier, every workflow in N8N is made up of two core parts. You have your triggers, which is what starts these workflows, and then you have your actions, the nodes within the workflow that actually do things like interacting with AI or your Google Drive or your vector database, whatever it might be. So the trigger for this NAN workflow is a chat input. So when chat message received, if you click into this, the options are quite simple. You just give authentication optionally, and then also the initial message that's gonna be there in the chat widget for the user when they first click on it to interact with the agent in a chat bot. And then when you add this as a trigger to an NAN workflow, you're immediately given this option in the bottom middle here to open up a chat window. And this is one of my favorite parts about NAN. It makes it so easy to quickly test your AI agents because you have a chat window directly in the UI to test things out as you're iterating on the prompt or the tools or the vector database, whatever it might be. So this just makes it so easy to test things and iterate on things. And so we'll even be looking at this later when I give a demonstration of this AI agent with RAG. And so we have our trigger here that I just covered. And when there's a chat message that comes through, it flows immediately into our RAG AI agent, which is a tools agent that uses Langchain under the hood. And so the way that I know that this uses Langchain, aside from just the documentation telling me, if I click on the plus icon here to add a new node to the workflow and I search for Langchain, sure enough, AI agent, which that's the node that I chose here, is the second option. And this just does everything for me. I don't have to code anything to have my tools, my memory, and my chat model. If I want to get more custom with it, I can use the Langchain code node to actually code things if I want something more robust that maybe no code can't do for me because no code can't do everything, but it can do most things. And so with this use case, I can just use the AI agent from Langchain here and it's got everything for me. It's got the chat model. So I'm using OpenAI in this case, and I can use any model that I want. It's really easy to set up my credentials as well. I just need an API key. And then also, if I wanted a different chat model, I can click on this connector here. I could use Claude if I want to select Anthropic. I could use Grok for Llama 3.1. I could use Olama, um, OpenAI, like I already have selected. Pretty much everything that I actually care about is here already. And so even if there's something else, like if I wanted to use Fireworks, for example, maybe I could set up custom code here. But for most cases, I'm happy with everything here. So it is just amazing. No code needed for all these integrations. And then also for the chat memory, there's a lot of options for that. So I'm just using chat memory, which is basically going to be stored locally on my NAN instance. Um, but there are other options as well. So if I click on the memory connector here, we could use something like Postgres chat memory. So having a SQL table that manages all the conversations or using Redis, for example. 
a lot of options here as well. And then for the tool calling, the best part of the AI agent where we actually have the RAG integration, there are a lot of options for tools as well. So if I click on this connector, there are a lot of custom tools that are already provided for you, like a calculator or a vector store, which is how I actually retrieve the documents to answer questions with RAG. Um, and then my favorite part is you can literally call any N8N workflow as a tool. And so you set up a workflow to do something like interacting with Google Drive in a multi-step workflow, which I'll show in a little bit. And then you just tell the AI agent how to use this workflow, like what parameters to give. And then also you tell it when to use that workflow, just like you would with any tool that you might define in custom code. And so you can literally have all the power of any NAN workflow you want, even if there's a ton of steps there, just packaged as a neat little tool that you can just shove onto your RAG AI agent. And so, yeah, it's just really cool stuff. Um, and so there's two tools that I have here for this agent. The first one is that built-in vector store tool where I retrieve the documents based on a user query um, to answer a question or something like that. And so I add this on as a tool that's connected here. And then it asks me to supply a vector store. And so I'm just using an in-memory vector store. So similar to my chat memory, it's going to just be stored locally on my N8N instance. So there'll be like files that are there on the server that I am hosting my N8N. There are other options as well though. So you could use, um, for example, a Supa based vector store or a Pinecone vector store. Uh, if you want my recommendation, I would actually highly recommend to go with Supa base here. And the reason for that is if I go back to the chat memory here, this is just a nice little gold nugget for you here. Uh, you can use a Supa base Postgres table for your chat memory. And then you can also set up a super base vector store. So you can have everything managed for your rag and your chat memories all within one place in super base. So that's my recommendation if you want to take something like this to production. But just for a quick demonstration purpose here, I'm running everything locally for my memory and my vector store. Uh, and then for your embedding models, there's a lot of options for that as well. I'm just using OpenAI for my embeddings as well. So same credentials, and then I'm just using the text embedding three large model uh, from OpenAI for my embedding. So that's what actually takes the different chunks of documents that I put into my vector database and turns them into vectors for retrieval later. Um, and then on top of that, I have a model that's associated with this tool to retrieve information. So I'm just using the same uh, GPT-40 mini here as well, uh, because you're going to get the documents from the vector database and you need a large language model to process that and pick out the right information. And so I'm using GPT for that again as well. So that is everything for the RAG retrieval, the actual retrieval part of RAG. Now to put documents in the vector database knowledge base, I have another tool here. And this is a NAN workflow as a tool, like I was mentioning earlier. And so the way that my chatbot works here, and you could take this in a million different ways, is it's going to start out with nothing in the vector database. But... I have infinite access to my Google Drive. So I can talk to my AI chatbot and say, I have this file in Google Drive. I want you to add it to your knowledge base for future reference. And so what it's going to do for this tool here is I have a little description that says, use this to search for a file in Google Drive. So the user might say, I want my meeting notes from last week to be added to the knowledge base. So it'll search for those meeting notes in Google Drive, download it, and add it to the vector database knowledge base for future querying. So that's the description to tell my AI agent when to use this tool. And then I have parameters. So in a JSON example here, I tell the AI agent what parameters to give this workflow so that it can execute properly. And so in this case, I'm just giving one parameter here, which is a query. How are you going to search Google Drive to find that file to download and then add to the vector database? Very, very simple. A couple of other options here, like the workflow ID. So this tells it what workflow and any end to actually execute for this tool. And then also the field that's going to be outputted from that workflow that you want to use as the response that would then tell the large language model what happened when it invoked that tool. Very, very simple stuff. And so the workflow that I have for this is actually this one right here. So it starts out with a webhook. And so this gets the query and then it passes it into the Google Drive. And so let me click into this and show you. It's going to search for a file or a folder based on the query here. And so if you search for um, 8 slash 22 meeting notes, for example, it would find that Word doc file that has those meeting notes in your Google Drive. And then on the next action, it's going to download that file. Then after it downloads it, 
it's going to extract the text from that file. And so now at this point in the workflow, I have all the text from that file that I've downloaded from Google Drive, and I can now put it into my vector database. So it's added as a knowledge base so the AI agent can use that to answer questions later. And so for this, I'm just using the same user documents memory key. So the way that I retrieve my documents is using this memory key, and the way that I insert documents is also using this key. Otherwise, those two things are not going to sync up. Um, and then it's kind of a similar setup here where I just have to choose my embeddings, which I'm going to use GPT-40, or not GPT-40, that's for the LLM. I'm going to use the text three large embeddings from OpenAI. And then I have a default data loader. So this is going to basically define how I take my text and put it as vectors in my vector database. And so I'm going to split into chunks, basically just using a 1000 chunk size text splitter. So all the same kind of stuff that you would see if you were to code a RAG agent yourself, um, but you have all the power and customization still within NAN with absolutely no code. And so I'm not really losing out on much here, doing it in a workflow with no code, which is the best part of it. Um, and so with all this together, I can now test this out a little bit. So let me show one quick thing here. I'm going to go to a couple of files that I have here for RAG. I've got two meeting notes here, one from 822 and one from 823. And these are, this is just fake data that I made up just to have something here for RAG. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell my AI agent to add these to its knowledge base. And then I'm going to ask a question that could only be answered when it has this in its knowledge base. So I'm going to go back to my RAG agent here. I'm going to save it. And then I'll go to the chat window in the bottom middle. And at first, I'm going to ask it a question that it shouldn't know at this point because it doesn't have these meeting notes in its knowledge base. I'm going to say, what are the action items from the meeting on 822? And it's going to take a little bit to get a response, try to find it in the vector database. And sure enough, I don't have access to that specific um, folder or that specific file right here. And so I'll say, okay, cool. Uh, find the 822 meeting notes in the drive and add them to your knowledge base. I don't have to get really specific in my request like this, but I'm just doing it right now to absolutely make sure that it works for a good demo here. And there we go. And that was like super quick too, which is also a really huge plus with NAN. It is fast. So I have successfully added the meeting notes to my knowledge base. So now I'm going to ask the exact same question here. And this time it's going to have an answer and it's going to be based on this file that we have here. So the action items from the meeting on 822 are plan a budget, make a bunch of money, everything that we have exactly right here in our Google Drive file. So I proved that it didn't have this information before. I showed in real time how I was able to add it and then get an answer from this document. And the reason you might wanna do it this way, the other way you could do it is you could just feed in every single file in your Google Drive into the vector database automatically, like every morning or every hour or something like that. And then that would be there automatically in the knowledge base. Um, but that, when you do it that way, sometimes your vector database can get bloated by a ton of files that you don't necessarily want to have available for RAG. And so this way I have control over exactly what I give to my agent to have knowledge of later on when I want to reference something again in a conversation, like maybe to remember something like the action items here. So that's why I have it set it up this way. Um, but yeah, there are a lot of ways that you could do this. The best part about NAN is however you want to do it, you can do it very easily in these workflows. Like it was, it just took minutes to create this workflow to find a file in Google Drive, download it and put it in the vector database. But you could set up something similar that you'd run on a schedule basis to uh, maybe pull files from a specific folder and constantly hydrate your vector database with those files. There's a ton of things you could do. Uh, so it's very, very powerful stuff. The one thing that I wanted to mention is that I have a second workflow involved here, and that is simply a workflow to call this webhook. So there's kind of a little issue with NAN that's unfortunate, but I found a really solid workaround here. When you have a tool that references a workflow ID, you can't reference the workflow ID of the workflow that has the agent. So I can't just take what I have right here as my workflow ID and dump that in here because it gives some weird errors saying that there's like not credentials or something like that. So you have to reference a separate workflow. So I just have this workflow that then hooks right back into um, this webhook within my original workflow. Um, and the reason you need to do that 
is because in my in-memory vector store here, my memory key, it says here that it's prefixed by the workflow ID to avoid collision. So if I am inserting into a vector database in a different workflow, it's gonna have a different memory key because it's prefixed by a separate workflow ID. So I have to have my retrieval be in the exact same workflow as I have the insertions, the data insertions into the vector database. Otherwise, they'll be prefixed by different workflow IDs, and so that data won't actually be available for the agent. So it's like a really, really technical thing that I just had to solve, but I have it solved for you now. And so that's why there'll be two workflows in the GitHub repository. Um, but yeah, it's just like a tiny little thing that you had to do, unfortunately. Um, but however, if you were to use um, a production vector database like Supabase, then you wouldn't have to worry about this because when you set up a, a Supabase vector store here as the tool, for the reg AI agent, you get to define the memory key in a more dynamic way where it's not going to be prefixed by the workflow ID. That's something that's just done for the in-memory vector store. So you wouldn't have this issue and you could actually have this whole tool to add a Google Drive file to a vector database as that separate workflow. Instead of having this weird workaround where you need to invoke this separate workflow that just hooks then right back into this part of uh, this whole workflow setup that I have here. So I hope that makes sense. It's all built for you at this point. So now you can just take these workflows that I have, steal them for yourselves and expand upon this to make the vector database production or to add more tools or to improve upon the reg or the prompts, whatever you want to do. This is yours to play around with no code at all. And you can even embed this in a website. So I'll show that really quick as well, just to give you a lot here. So I can take um, the embed. So I go to more info right here. Uh, when I open my chat window. And I know that this is code. We didn't have to write any code though. And you don't have to know code to be able to embed this. You can just take this right here, copy it. You, and you can go over to your website. I'm just gonna go to an online HTML editor here. You can paste it in here. And then when I click run, I have this chat widget in the bottom right, like you see on a lot of websites where I can click into this. And there we go, we've got our chat bot now. And I can say something like, hi, how are you? And then after it gives me an answer super, super fast, um, I can say, what are the action items from 822? And so that's gonna, again, reference the document with RAG, giving the answers, because I've already inserted that into the vector database, super cool. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much everything for this workflow. Um, I'm definitely going to be making more videos on RAG with NAN in the future because this is super powerful stuff. And one thing that I'm probably going to do is also focus on Supabase and getting things deployed in production. So if you're interested in that, let me know. I would really appreciate knowing just so I can know that that's something that you want to see. And then uh, I'll probably make a video on it. So yeah, more on RAG to come. I hope that you found this useful and that you're able to build a really cool things with RAG and NAN using this as your foundation. If you found this helpful, I would really, really appreciate a like and a subscribe. And with that, I will see you in the next video.